Hey everyone, welcome to another Avid Max Tying Tuesdays. Brady Lair with you here today. Going to show you how to tie this designated hitter. This is a cool Umqua Feather Merchants fly designed by David Hill. We're going to tie a Golden Stone flavor today. But you can tie it in the Salmon Fly, Squala, and a whole bunch of other variation, color variations to mimic whatever stone fly you're trying to fish. We'll start out just with some uni thread. Uh, the hook we're tying on though, first off, is the Tiemco 2312. Nice long shanked curved uh, hook here. Great for terrestrials, hoppers, stone flies, and caddis in your smaller sizes. From there we're going to get our foam ready. This is going to be the underbody. So we're going to start by getting a nice oval piece of foam cut out. I'm going to use the River Roads Creations body cutter here. And this is the size small, the Chernobyl cutter. So we'll lay a piece of this two millimeter tan tires foam out. And just depress down until we get a nice cut through. And then we can use that for our underbody here on this pattern. And I only want the back half. I'm actually going to cut off the front half. So we'll measure that out just so that we have a little bit of oval sticking out the back. And then I'm going to trim it right where that abdomen and thorax meet. So we'll cut that short. And then I'm going to coat my shank to keep this foam from moving on me. Just a little bit of zappy gap here. And then we can lay that right down. And I like to sort of fold it over the top of the shank and then get my initial wraps down nice and snug on it. Walking back. And we'll land right about where that barb is and leave that little tail sticking out. We can secure this in place and then get ready for the overbody. For the overbody, we're going to do something a little different. Typically, it's a dubbing body, but today I'm going to use some of the Semperfly poly yarn. It's a nice hydrophobic material and works well as a body wrap for this pattern. It's also a great material for your parachute posts. Nice, thick poly yarn. So I'm just going to marry that right up to the foam, tie it in on the side, and then we'll end up wrapping this forward over the top of that foam. So a super buoyant bug, great one to fish in the summertime, good for a dropper rig, help hang your heavier nymphs right off it. So we'll go ahead and bring that poly yarn forward now here and we're just going to get it to somewhat lay flat as we go. And this will create a nice thick juicy body. Only takes a few wraps forward. And we are leaving ourselves quite a bit of room up here because we have some work to do with the wing and the head of our fly. So about three hook eyes back is where I like to land. And then we'll capture this and wrap it down nice and snug. You want to make sure you get this real well because it's so fibrous that when you clip it off, it can come loose on you. So beware of that. Like we have one strand that already came rogue, but we'll just clip that out. All right, so the next thing we're going to tie in is the underwing to this fly. And I'm going to use the Chernobyl cutter again. I'm going to create just kind of a, a template. This has a hard time getting through this kind of tough web wing, but you can make a nice depression on it. And then you have sort of a, a gauge to cut out against. Uh, so then I'll come back in with my scissors. And this is going to kind of match what we had on the foam and be just a nice underwing to this bug. It's 
So we have that kind of cut out and then we're going to go ahead and measure it the full length all the way to the back of that foam and I'm going to trim it down and then we'll thin it to make it easier to tie in as well. And just make a little point like so and we can lay that right on top here and tie it into place and on to the next material which is going to be a little bit of elk hair on this guy and you want a nice long elk hair because you're going to fold this in tie it in forward and then fold it on back over like you would when you're doing a bullet head so we'll get some off of our hide there fairly sparse amount well, we'll make sure we clean it out real good get all that under fur out of there as best we can and then we'll go ahead and stack it and you will lose some of the shorter fibers in here that's okay when you go to tie it in you might lose some especially if you're doing larger sizes the size six or size fours for your salmon flies but we'll pull that out and measure it up here so we want to go the full length of the body on this and then a little bit extra sticking out in front of the two or three hook eyes to give us a little extra wiggle room so we'll measure that out and then clip those butts short and just double check ourselves here and then tie that in so we're going to tie in the butts right up next to that underwing And then walk right on forward to that hook eye. Don't want to crowd it, but we do want to end right behind it. And snug it down nice and tight. And try and keep this from spinning on you. We will want to do that. And up some of those loose threads now that we're nice and snug. And then we can clip out our excess here. Get a nice thread base to work with here. We've got a couple more things to get in. So this is a cool pattern developed by David Hill for the salmon fly or for the stonefly variations. He talks about you can go read about it on Umco Feather Merchant's site. He talks about how it's been evolved off of the Matamax, which is a really cool dry fly. If you haven't seen that one, a good one to check out. So now we're going to lay down just a little bit of super fine dubbing and yellow to match just to sort of blend things together overall and it'll help sort of facilitate that head that we're going to add here. So right behind that hook eye and then just walking back. And you don't need too much, fairly sparse amount at this point. And right back onto where that underwing is laying. Now I'm going to fold that straight back on over. Kind of get all of those elk hair fibers to lay nice and flat. And then we'll come up and capture it. And do a couple wraps and snug it down. And then we'll walk forward just a little bit because we're going to add in some hackle and some legs so we'll give ourselves a little bit of room there first thing we're going to add now at this point is the hackle this is a whiting cape that i'm using today it is the dark ginger barred 
dark ginger. And we'll just go ahead and measure it out. We are going to clip it on the bottom size, but we still want to be sized appropriately for this fly. And this is just a gorgeous color overall. So we'll tie that right on in. Next to our hair wing there. And then we can cover that stem on up. And then we'll sneak in our legs. These are a round rubber leg. In the golden stone, what do they call this? Uh, it's a brown, dark golden stone brown. I like my legs to be pretty much the full length of the body to the rear. And then I'll typically match that length to the front. And mirror it on the other side here. And we'll go ahead and skip our thread out in front of those and bring our hackle on up. This can be a tricky piece now that the legs are in here, uh, but if you move these legs on forward, then we can do a couple of wraps with this hackle right behind. And then we'll let the legs go and we'll go in between a couple wraps and we're just trying to cover up all of that thread and then we'll pull them rearward and wrap on up to the finish line here and then we can capture that off with our thread Give it a couple of securing wraps. Clip out our excess materials here. Get rid of that leg that I left long. Clip out the extra hackle there. And then give this fly a nice secure whip finish. Great little dry fly. Can imitate a lot of different things. Definitely a solid attractor pattern that still has some nice realistic aspects to it. And you can do it in a lot of different color options. That Semperfly poly yarn comes in a great orange that would be good for your salmon flies. And a whole variety there available as well. One thing I almost forgot is this fly does get a trim. This hackle on the bottom, we're going to hack it right on off. And that helps this fly just sit nice and flat on the water. That piece of foam on the back We'll keep it up, keep it flat. But when this lands, the majority of the time you're gonna be landing with that hook point down, getting that profile underneath that you're looking for. So cool little dry fly, great little summer bug. Definitely one you can play around with and have a lot of fun fishing just by itself with a smaller dry fly trailing behind it or uh, in a dropper rig this really shines. The designated hitter.